Hello and welcome to a special edition of Sustainable Action. This is your host, Sue Spicer. We're on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. If you're listening to us right now, you've gone to AudioRealm.com. You typed Cozy into the search engine and pressed the listen icon. We're having a special show tonight because tomorrow is a bunch of primaries and myself and some folks that I know took a special trip over the weekend to Michigan, to Detroit. So tonight we have one of the canvassers who knocked on many, many doors in Detroit. Would you like to introduce yourself to our listening audience? Gladly. My name is Juliana Tanti. That's it. That I. Okay, this is going to be a long night, folks. <laughs> okay, um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I, I know Sue um, since 2015. 2018. My apologies. Wow, I feel like I've known you longer than that. Um, and uh, we've been working together to try to get um, Senator Bernie Sanders elected. The trip we took this weekend. Um, was one that was quite worth it, did that over the weekend, would have definitely dedicated more time, but um, I currently am a world language teacher at a, a public school here in Indianapolis, Washington Township Schools, um, um, and I'm also a, a, a mother, and um, so uh, very why, why interested Bernie in Sanders? helping Bernie, yes, um, Bernie Sanders, well, the... Why do you need Bernie Sanders? There are various reasons that I need Bernie Sanders. Um, the, the main ones that I would lay out for you that personally affect me um, and the people around me, um, friends, family, would, first of all would be health care, um, medical bills racking up for everyone that I know, myself included, ever since 2008 that um, I gave birth to my daughter here in, in Indy, there are still bills that I'm paying off um, just because the work that I do in life always involves helping children, um, people in the community, so I have not ever had the type of income that allows me to to um, to be covered, whether that be... With, so um, you, don't, you don't make a living wage. I don't make a living wage. You, you don't That's have good health care. Um, yeah, a second big concern as to why um, I am for Bernie and encourage people to look into Senator Sanders' policies as um, his student loan forgiveness program and with also tied with co um, free college for all and trade school program. Um, the third main thing that I would, I'm, he heavily, I'm heavily for is his um, childhood education program. The early and, childhood. And universal child care. Early, yes, early childhood um, education program and early child care, um, universal child care for all. Um, I, I believe that's a major preventative um, measure <laughs> for, it, for the for the world for the societal woes. Absolutely, I think you know, as we know that that's the major. Um, the brain development occurs really heavily during um, those first eight years of, of your life, and I think Bernie Sanders definitely has that. Um, figured out. So those are my top three. Well, I guess so, over overarching that, right. overarching that, it's it's money and politics, Sue. I mean, I, we can't accomplish those three major things um, that I, I feel it will, are most It will important. be difficult. It'll be more difficult. It'll be more difficult. It, it's difficult because you know Bernie is the only candidate who doesn't take corporate money mm -hmm. and Correct. super rich people money. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so let's get that big money and special interests uh, out of politics. So if you don't like corruption and you want a candidate that is... Now, for my listening audience, I am a tw since 2015 Bernie bro. Mm -hmm. I went to Iowa for Bernie Sanders in 2016. I also campaigned for him in South Carolina mm -hmm. and Georgia as well as Indiana. Mm -hmm. I was a state and national delegate in 2016 to the co Democratic conventions. I was in Philadelphia. Um, I learned some just really disturbing things about my party here in the state. I don't really want to go into them right now, but it, it certainly has made me question the ethics of my own party. And it's hard to trust 
um, my party to be um, ethical when in the court, um, the lawsuit that was filed by Bernie supporters against the party for cheating Bernie Sanders in 2016, when they said in court, you know, we're a private club, we could decide the results in the back room and that would be legal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. it, so, I guess, I guess the, <laughs> by, by default, I, I guess I could say I was uh, helping Bernie in 2016 too, just by later or, or, fall, or become part of his movement, truly, when, by helping you in your campaign. <laughs> that would be as well. And now I'm definitely fully um, committed and that's helping cool. texting, phone banking. Um, and that's for Bernie. That's not for me. For I'm not running in no. 2020 <laughs> for anything. In 2018, I primaried uh, Hillary superdelegate Andre Carson, uh, mostly because I was tired I'm still tired of having to call and email and get my friends to call and email him to do the things to be our champion for this district that has so many needs. We need a champion. We need somebody who will put people to task, who will bring the bully pulpit, who will make the cameras show up in areas that need to have light shined on mm -hmm. them. I miss Julia Carson. <laughs> I miss Julia Are you Carson. Are saying we need an organizer in chief? We need a local organizer, <laughs> a local organizer in chief. Organizer in chief. <laughs> so 2018, I carried Bernie's platform into the seventh district of Indiana's congressional district into that primary. Mm -hmm. um, Andre spent like three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. I spent like six grand. Mm -hmm. um, still about eight percent of the vote. See, that's impressive to me. I mean, when you think of people that are a lot more well known that are now entering the um, campaigning to run for districts like in California, I mean, you hear them get a lot less than what you did. So I think that's pretty neat to get 8% versus an incumbent Hillary Superdelegate. That, that spends a lot of money, a lot of money. Yeah. But, um, but it wasn't because, you know, I, I didn't have, I didn't have anything against him going in. Um, well, I had something. Yeah. Um, my dissatisfaction with his participation mm -hmm. um, and that I miss Julia. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had to bring Bernie's platform in because mm -hmm. we need to get the money out of politics. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. Going back to the overarching issue, big money to politics. So people forget that in 2016 that Senator Sanders and the people who supported him were cheated in that election. Yes, and I wonder why people forget that. Because the media doesn't talk mm -hmm. about it. So one of the mm -hmm. reasons we are here, one of the reasons that I exist on a radio format is to bring attention to things that the corporate media doesn't want to remind people of. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there was cheating in 2016. Mm -hmm. There. Well, they, and, and then closing this, polling stations in areas. Mm -hmm. um, they would, when they shut down uh, van access, was a voter a voter access network in the 2016 campaign. When they turned that off, magically, in other states, some strong Sanders supporters disappeared off that roll, and we got access back to it again. Mm -hmm. That was reported to me directly by someone who had canvassed the exact same turf every time it was canvassed, mm -hmm. and miraculously, in one of those shutdowns, a whole street disappeared on it. Mm -hmm. Federal purging. Well, it's the see. The, to me, the Democrats don't, my Democrats, they don't fight voter um, suppression as hard as they should be fighting mm -hmm. voter suppression. Mm -hmm. When Tulsi Gabbard introduced the legislation to make every election have to have paper ballots so we would have a paper backup right. and put the money in to pay communities that had bought other machines mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff to give them the money mm -hmm. so we could all go back to a system that wasn't hackable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't this think that's radical. First time you, you might think that's that might be the mm -hmm. first time many of you have heard that. Yeah, and, and a lot of you that did who do know Jill Stein, she was a big um, ambassador for that too, and, and still advocates for that. But she's a Russian. 
<laughs> and the oh, Russians such a and, and the Russians want to interfere oh, in I our know. elections. I know. That's they why want to, they want us to have paper ballots and and <laughs> you know, um, as an education to folks who are here in the states, who are here in Indianapolis, most real democracies have paper ballots that are hand counted. Hmm. Hand counted paper ballots. Mm -hmm. Now in Los Angeles, they went from 4,523 polling stations in Los Angeles County mm -hmm. in 2016. Mm -hmm. They went from over 4,500 to less than a thousand. And that change was made especially well. Well, how how soon was it made? They, I believe the, the transition, uh, the new machines started here in 2020. Mm -hmm. So they, they cut some of the polling stations. Mm -hmm. um, they, see, they, they, see, they cut the 873, there. they cut 873 of them, I believe it was, in, in 2018. But, um, and that's what I thought. A chunk it's, of them were removed 2020. Guess who was surging in the polls in January of 2020? Uh, um, certain, a certain, a certain Jewish senator. Certain senator that's been fighting for equality, civil rights. Whose who's premise of getting elected, his premise of getting elected is to bring people into the electorate who aren't voting. Mm -hmm. Young people, people of color, people who have given up on the system or don't see any point in joining it. That are disillusioned. Oh, my goodness. I think this is a great segue for me to share some stories about disillusionment. Oh, please. Um, let's hear these are the, these, stories. These are definitely the people that um, Senator Sanders, Bernie Sanders, is trying to bring into the fold. Um, he's I, working on it, folks. He's not trying. He's working he on it. He is working. He is tirelessly working um, to do it, and, and so is the, his movement. But, um, yeah, that is a fact. There are people completely disillusioned. I mean, there are people like me prior in, in the past that would just blindly vote, vote D, you know, just have that next to your name. Okay, sure. I, I've heard that, that they're a little bit better than the other, and from what I can tell, it's... You know, that's kind of where I, and I never thought about it, and, but there are others that have never voted, there's, the majority of the country never has, don't even understand. Uh, it's um, not a difference. majority who hasn't. Oh, okay, my apologies. The majority currently don't vote. We, are those we, polls we, wrong? We eked it up. We, ah, we eked it up. Okay. Where it's just above. Just above, okay, regardless. Because because there's there's like twenty five percent Democrats, twenty uh, seven percent Republicans, okay, and the rest are independents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you might be talking about primary election. Because I, I believe that's okay. what I meant. Okay. Yeah, my, my, my apologies, apologies for not saying that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people um, just are are not interested in. Um, um, or not, I'm sorry, not interested, they're disillusioned. Um, they, they uh, in the Rust Belt, people we talked to, uh, talked to in Detroit, you know, they would open their door gladly, and a couple people in their 50s, 60s um, listened. They said, you know what, I, I just, I'm, I'm not interested in voting. I don't think it'll make a difference. It won't make a difference. Because but they were willing to listen. They nodded their head, they heard about corruption, agreed on corruption, that there's too much money in politics, um, that the health care is a disaster, that, uh, um, um, that child care is a mess, and that people that serve those in need and the children are just not um, recompensated the way they should. So there are, I don't even know where these people lean. We just had a conversation based on our humanity, based on our needs, on what we see and what we feel. And we see the buildings being boarded up. We see that our jobs were sent abroad during the bad trade deals. Do you think they'll show up tomorrow? I think, they, I think they will. I think, especially, oh goodness, there's this, um, our friend Kelly Don Jones went with us and there's this one lady that I, I really believe that she um, pushed her, or I think she moved this woman inside enough to, to make her want to come out. The people that, um, that were on the fence, 
you know, I, I, all I can do is be hopeful. There's really no way to know if, when they say yes, they'll be out. But what I can tell you is that the vast majority of people that did open their door during canvassing that we did talk to, the vast majority were already um, supporting Bernie Sanders and those that were, on, that were on the fence, the majority did at the end of the conversation say, wow, this sounds like my guy. Thank you so much, where do I vote? Give them the information, oh, it's the school just down the block. They're like, oh, great, what do I need to bring? So, and so just the fact that they engaged and wanted to know where to go it really makes me feel like, yes, I think they will come out. I think they will come out. I think they understand um, that the more people come out, then it'll be something that's just too big to rig. That's the goal. Too big to rig. We need to make it where the outcome is too, the turnout is too big to rig. So where you went into neighborhoods that are the ones who aren't coming out to vote? Is I, that basically... I went to two that do, and well, actually, I would say all three of them. Um, the, the first on Saturday, the first neighborhood that we canvassed in was a majority um, um, Middle Eastern uh, family neighborhood, um, middle class, um, and majority of of them were um, from Islamic uh, Islamic religion as well. So um, it could be that based on the fears, that um, the stigma against them, yeah, I, it's possible that I, we could consider that a, a, a group that might be afraid to come out um, and vote. Uh, the second neighborhood that I um, canvassed in was a majority Hispanic neighborhood. Um, uh, and, and it's a working class neighborhood. It's in a neighborhood that's being gentrified at the moment. Um, so a lot of them are being pushed out. And it's not just a, a recent influx. This is a, like a historical. Uh, someone that lives local there, uh, locally there, um, was uh, educating me on the area. And it's a sort of historical um, Hispanic uh, neighborhood. So they, these families have been in that part of Detroit for a long, long time. Um, and now they're being pushed out. Um, the third neighborhood we went to that, again, are the people where I found most disillusioned people were those were the Hispanic neighborhood and, um, and uh, the heavier African-American neighborhood, which we tackled later on, um, which was a mix of um, older and younger um, families. Um, so yeah, the, you're right. Those we, we did tackle a lot of a lot of your the, those demographics. So, so for anyone come out normally. Anyone who is saying that Bernie Sanders is not working to expand the electorate hasn't paid a bit of attention to the actual mechanism, actual right. mechanisms of his campaign. Yeah, it, it's it's mind blowing to see how it all works from the inside. Now that um, I've, I've had this experience canvassing, and to know that uh, the. Um, yeah, they, they know exactly where they're sending you, who you need to talk to, people that have never been visited before. I've had, I had a lady say like, oh, like it's, really, you're here? Like you're not afraid, you're by yourself? Like a young woman like yourself? And well, there's I a mean, team. There's <laughs> um, a team oh, in right, the area. Right, right. Sorry, there is a team, but you know, we do a block each, and for yes. that one block, we're you know, we're by ourselves knocking doors, and sometimes we're together. Um, there was moments that I was going down the block and then meeting up with my partner down the other block. Um, but it was just interesting to see that they, no one had ever talked to them. Um, but here we are, you know, we are trying to expand the, the electorate, that's for sure. Well, we're, we're working on it diligently, and, and I would posit that we have done that work but we are not getting the credit for it electorally. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We heard yesterday that in Texas, in um, strong Bernie areas, there were 44 thumb drives that hadn't been counted yet. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. 44 thumb drives in Texas that mm -hmm. hadn't been counted yet. Mm -hmm. Well, what about, what about the thumb drive? I, I don't. I can't really source this one. Maybe you can tell me if you've heard this, that the thumb drives have completely been erased. So I need to double check on that, but I heard that too. So not just that they haven't been counted, but they're like, oops, there's nothing on it now, what happened? Hmm. But anyway. Mm -hmm. See, that would, that's problematic. Yeah. That's yeah. problematic. Yeah. It's not, it's not. There were people who had two, there were places that had two to seven hour delays. Mm -hmm. And what working poor person 
want young person who has class, college, mm -hmm. part-time sure. job, um, mm -hmm. night, night shift, night and, shift yeah. who has two to seven hours to wait in line mm -hmm. for a polling machine. Mm -hmm. And it those, same, it those same waits happened in Los Angeles County, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which everybody was like, woohoo, Bernie was supposed to do so good here, why didn't he? And none of them are telling you they went from 4,500 polling places where everybody knew what they were doing and down to under a thousand polling mm -hmm. stations. Mm -hmm. They then add to that a brand new voting machine. Mm -hmm. There was confusion on the voting machine because it only allows four candidates on the screen, screen at a time and you have to change the page, you have to go to page two or, or, three, or three, depending on how many presidential candidates or, or mm -hmm. whatever candidates for whatever thing. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a lottery for where your name is on that ballot. Mm -hmm. But what does that say about democracy when it? They didn't educate people on the, on the new machine. They didn't stress the early voting. Mm -hmm. So they, they had closed the polling stations, gave them less polling gave, stations. Gave them, and then you add to the new machine so it took people longer to vote because they hadn't voted with that machine before. Mm -hmm. And then in reported by people on the scene, I watched um, videos that people were posting mm -hmm. on, on um, Twitter. People in the ground. That like people on the ground, on the ground yeah. in, in the line mm -hmm. and, and saying things like, you know, there's six machines in here, but only two of them work. Mm -hmm. And the reports about staff not being properly trained, so it's not to yeah. help people on so it's that. Not, yeah, yeah. So you know, here, here, we're we Democrats are supposed to be all that in a bag of chips, a, a party. We're supposed to be above corruption. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be good at this. Mm -hmm. We're to get people to come out to vote for us. Mm -hmm. We need to be good at it. And if we're not good at democracy, that's why people have given up on it, is because we aren't any good at it. And it's an indictment of the entire system. And it's interesting. You don't hear about, there, there's not a um, Bel Air video about people um, having two to seven hour lines. There was, you know, mm. in, in, in you know, there's stories about, oh, it only, I had a great time, it only took me five minutes to vote. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. why wasn't there, you know, if there's great big lines, why aren't we telling people the places where there aren't lines? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moving people. Mm -hmm. Sanders campaign had to file a thing in court to get the polls to stay open to 10. To get people, which was then declined, unfortunately, of course. So they, they, but they were so poorly organized at these <laughs> polling stations that they, there were places that they were getting in line after the polls were supposed to be closed mm. and letting, and they got to vote. Yeah, it's just because a that's see in, in Indiana, when when it's six o'clock, if we have a line. We put one of our uh, election judges at the end of that line, and they turn away the people who walk up to it after. Yeah. But everybody who's in line at six gets to vote. Mm -hmm. How right. hard is that? Right. And you know, the Iowa caucuses. It, they had rules changes because of the shenanigans that the Clinton campaign did in 2016. Mm -hmm. So, and. They knew the rules, and in 2016, in the, pre in the caucuses, you didn't have to stay with your first choice whether or not they were viable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really complicated. So now that you're locked in, if your candidate is viable, well, you're, you're locked if you're, in. You're supposed to be locked in. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Major rule change. In Indiana, mm -hmm. when, there's a, when there's a rules change, there's a piece of paper in your packet as mm -hmm. a poll inspector mm -hmm. that it's a long piece of paper just with the changes in the law. Oh. Just the changes. So you maybe you've been a poll inspector for, for
for 25 years and you didn't bother to do the new training because you've done it, you do it in your sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they look at people like that and they say, well, okay, here we have a change. We want to make sure we catch everybody so right. they can't slip through the training and botch our election. Gotcha. They put a piece of paper in there that is just the rules changes. Okay. So part of kudos part, to Indiana for that. <laughs> I'm, it made me for, give credit where like, credit is too. Okay. Like yeah. Okay. See, and I started working as a poll inspector in Indiana in Indianapolis when the Republicans were getting the voter ID law stuff mm -hmm. put in place because they were talking about all this voter fraud and all these people and I'm like I want to go see this for myself I'm gonna work elections mm -hmm. so I can see this voter fraud for myself and that first election we had to have picture IDs I got to send my 80 plus year old v or a World War II veteran neighbor somebody I live three doors down from, mm -hmm. I had to send him home for a photo ID. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that hurt. Yeah. That yeah. hurt. Um, Mi Michigan's not a photo ID state. I'm really hoping, I mean, that's a great, it, it's positive. I don't know when that changed. I don't know the history of how their um, voting works, but um, during the training this weekend as a canvasser, my first time canvassing, by the way, Sue. So it was it was a wonderful experience. I'd never done that before. Um, yeah, you can bring a, a bill. You um, you have to match the address. If you bring a non-picture ID, you can bring anything with your name and address on it, and then you have to request an affidavit to. And then they. So if there is an extra step. Granted, you know, but it's still better I, than having to I am right not, off the bat have that. It, probably would delay the count, you know, once you have that extra step of requesting an affidavit for verification and, and whatnot. Um, but they're not given like a provisional ballot. ballot or something? Um, no, not that I know of. Yeah. They still get to vote. They still get to vote, so it's a little bit better than here. Um, the no. the well, uh, not see, sure. Per, um, the, getting, you argue that getting that's worse? The ID, getting the ID is um, a, more of a challenge for um, elderly uh, elderly people in general. Sure, yeah. Um, particularly um, mm -hmm. African Americans. Mm -hmm. I would assume that they would be better than the, to do it the Detroit, the Michigan way for, for them, but yeah. And in our provisional ballots, um, you have a week to go to the city county building in Marion County mm -hmm. if you're voting in Marion County and they make you do a provisional ballot for some reason. Mm -hmm. You go down to the, to the county and you um, prove it's you and you know that's your vote mm -hmm. um, and then your vote goes into the, you get counted. Then you get counted. The, yeah. other, the other way that I think we don't get a lot of credit, you said we don't get the electoral credit, even though we have the ground grain <laughs> gain credit, um, we don't get the electoral credit. But we, we also are never, especially I, I see it really heavily now in 2020, um, Bernie Sanders has won the popular vote in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, killed it in Nevada, by the way. That's being erased. Black people. Hispanic people like myself being erased, they're like, well, it, well, it wasn't that big of a margin. Yes, it was. You look at the union workers that voted. The, I mean, the margins are phenomenal. Um, that voted for the policies of Bernie Sanders versus going along with um, what their um, leadership was pressuring them to do, so, which is to vote against Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Which is the number one that. positive, the number one issue that people believe in coming out of the Democratic primary in the polling as it's coming out, as people are walking out, is 72% right now pro Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Another way we're not getting any credit. Yeah, at all the issues, you look at the exit polls, everything down the issues. Um, getting rid of, even, even the getting rid of private insurance, polling really, really well. Um, people um, don't like people, their insurance companies. No, they don't. No, this, they don't. We, we hate it. We, uh, my family, is someone that's underinsured 
big time. We I, I don't even know why we waste our money signing up with our employer based um, insurance. Honestly, it's make it, it's just it, it brings comfort to my it, husband. But you, I, you get <laughs> you get negotiated prices. Um, but you know, one has to wonder if you wouldn't be better off throwing the money. Into it, a it makes you account. wonder, but it's scary to think that oh my gosh, what if something major does happen? So we, we always have it as um as an as an emergency in case you know something major happens. But anyway, um, the and the other aspect that I was trying to get to was um, the young vote did increase in Iowa for, from 2016, completely not covered the way it should have been, completely not given the credit he that did, it should have been. He did what he given. was trying to do. Absolutely. He did what we've been working mm -hmm. on doing. Mm -hmm. It was more youth vote in Iowa. Yeah, it, it was, was actually new. higher voter turnout in Iowa in 2020. More right. people caucused. Right. Yeah. And but all but all the the media coverage was stolen by the the disaster of the app and the, the shadow app and and whatnot. So, yay! <laughs> yeah, and I've I've seen caucus math, and caucus math is some crazy stuff. And if you haven't had a training in it, mm -hmm. there's going to be mistakes. Mm -hmm. And for the party saying no, we're not going to pit, we're not going to fix people's math. Mm -hmm. so that we can properly award the delegates. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the joke um, that I heard at my Airbnb, not in the Bernie office, but with voters from Iowa, people in Iowa who could become the person in charge of the caucus said, well, if I really like somebody then, I'm just going to get in charge and I'm going to write whatever number I want if they're not going to change it. Okay. Now that's where the anti-corruption party. Mm -hmm. When we won't fix our own bad math, mm -hmm. that's right. that. How is that an anti-corruption? Right. Right. No. Um, I don't. I can just tell you that just being on the ground talking to people, they they see it. They're frustrated with it. They're they're tired of it. Um, only a couple people brought up electability. Everyone else was really just worried about the issues. Um, uh, very few people, just a couple of them, were like, "Well, can we? Can I'm worried about getting Trump out." Well, th you know, when you, I ask them, "What's your major concern?" Okay, getting Trump out. I'm like, "Okay, well, let's pretend Trump is out. What do you care about?" Oh, and then the conversation really started. Um, found, you know, he realized that. Healthcare, okay, I think this is what we want. Wage. I think, right, right, and um, the whole narrative of. Um, you know, being a monolithic, just all white young bros that supports Bernie is, is, is complete nonsense. Not just poll, not just on the numbers, but anyone that um, wants to take the time to come see what it looks like, you will see it with your own eyes. It is a rainbow coalition, multi-racial, multi-ethnic, multi-generational um, at the Detroit canvassing um, headquarters that we were at. It was unbelievable. I can't even explain to you how I felt like I was back in um, in, in, in the Middle East, in the Mediterranean, just around all these people that I that I that I that I know. Um, and we had um, African American people, we had Hispanic, Latina people like myself from all over the country, um, Indian folks. We had Cambodian. We had an Australian woman. It was everywhere. We had elderly Shout gentlemen. Shout out to Ava. Uh, yeah. Love you, Ava. <laughs> Ava was she in Des Moines, a, Iowa with me. Yeah. Oh, I saw we, her we there. had a lady from the um, LA Teachers Union, Glo um, Gloria, my amiga Gloria. She was. Um, I got to meet her. Um, so we had Arabic, Arabic speakers, Arabic speakers Spanish yeah. speakers, we Hindi speakers. Um, quite a mix, a, a beautiful mix. And um, I think you know, no one said it best than Dr. Cornell West when he popped in to visit us at the office, which was a great, a great experience. I mean, I was just in awe um, when they said, "Guys, be back by three. We have a special guest. Dr. Cornell West will be here." And sure enough. He came to, to, he was to show his support. He was a little late, kept us waiting. He was fashionably late. He was um, late. We had um, an LA, or LA, <laughs> a uh, Detroit police commissioner mm -hmm. and a state house representative who both endorsed um, Senator Sanders. 
and they gave rousing speeches oh, yes and thanked us all all of us who were in from out of town mm -hmm. to thank for us for our participation in in their democratic process mm -hmm. and we felt very welcomed by mm -hmm. them and then we just as soon as we calmed down and had gone back to our business of what we were doing then mm -hmm. oh there he is <laughs> yeah it was wonderful i mean these the, these are the this is really a, like a star-stricken moment for me um, um people i look up to that that's who my job talks for like senator sanders alexander castle cortez dr cornell west um um, versus any Hollywood elite, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I got the, I, I, I have yet to show you, but a, a little like 15 second clip of Dr. West um, saying, you know, it is just not enough to be a, a female. It's not enough to just be female. It's not enough to just be black. It's not enough to just be white. It's not enough to just be transgender. Um, it has to go beyond identity politics, and he looked around, and there was all sorts of representation there, and he we knew that there's so, there's so much folks. more that connects us. We have to be more than just what we look like on the outside, recognizing what we look like on the outside, where we came from, what our histories are, and how we're tied together. Oh, we had indigenous sure. people as well. Yeah, absolutely. We indigenous, had, yes. We had indigenous people as yeah. well. Um, and that's what mm -hmm. Dr. West did. It, it was the easy part of his speech right there because all he had to do was look at all of the faces staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all there. We were all there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then one of, one of the people who traveled um, from Indianapolis in our group, um, I'm going to say her first name, Bella. Mm -hmm. um, Bella is a young teen mm -hmm. who was canvassing alongside the other burners, mm -hmm. uh, doing the work and drawing pictures and stuff when she was um, at the office waiting for the next round to go out. Mm -hmm. And Dr. West looked at her and was like, how old are you? And when he found out how young this young lady She's was. 13. Craziness! Mm -hmm. it, you can see, you can see the hope rise in him, mm -hmm. knowing that the younger generation was participating on that level. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, she can tell you when we went out, the young folks, even prior to under age, under voting age, were all about it. He goes, "Yes, Bernie." Um, and we oh, need yeah, to listen everybody. to our children. I like your shirt. <laughs> we stopped in after canvassing um, our second route on one of the days, of the two days that we were there. Um, stopped at a Mexican restaurant. I guess it was Mexican slash Salvadoran because they had Salvadoran food on their menu too. Um, uh, so we got some nourishment and at the end um, we asked if we could put our Bernie sign in the window and sure enough, El Corral. El Corral Restaurant, muchas gracias. Thank you for your support. Um, they endorsed Bernie Sanders on the spot and um, had put his um, shout um, out. Shout, yeah, shout, shout out. Shout out, out, shout on, out. The, on, <laughs> on the, the southwest side. side of Detroit. Check say it that, out. Say that name again. El, el, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's El Comal. El Comal. A Comal is like a flat iron skillet that we make tortillas on. Uh huh. Yeah. El Comal. And the food's Detroit. good. Oh, very good. It was yummy. <laughs> so there's a shout out. While we're doing shout outs, I want to mention to everyone, this is Sue Spicer with Sustainable Action here on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. If you're in Indianapolis, you need to stop by 40 East St. Clair Street at the Central Library and go to the atrium level, level two. And in the corner there, there you will find the Double Cupped Cafe where you will find halal turkey on our turkey sandwiches not pork pepperoni on our personal pan pizzas. We have vegetarian options, vegan options, and then we have the pork palooza sandwich called the Slaughterhouse Five. So we have something for everyone. Wonderful baristas with all the coffee drinks that you can imagine and more. So stop in, 
to Double Cupped Cafe at the Central Library during open library hours. Now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and go back to exit polls. Okay, good. So on exit polls, one of the things that they, they ask people about is, you know, the issues. And you, you mentioned that they're even asking people, Medicare for all, even if it takes away your private insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we haven't heard a peep on, on any of the mainstream media, any of the corporate media whatsoever, and surprisingly, very, very, very little on our main alternative internet um, providers, alternative pr providers mm -hmm. of news. Mm -hmm. Independent it, media. Independent mm -hmm. media aren't striking a chord about the exit polls being significantly off in Massachusetts and Texas. Yeah, quite disappointing. Because, you know, if you think of the map, if you watched the electoral map on Super Tuesday, you watched it on TV, whatever station you watched it on, they called Massachusetts really early for Bernie, and they called Texas. They had him as the winner in Texas. They didn't call it, Not but right they right. had him. But they, they didn't call him. But they had Bernie ahead in Massachusetts and thinking that they he was going to win it. And they had him ahead in Texas, and we're talking like he was going to win it mm -hmm. because the exit polls told them mm -hmm. he was going to win it. Mm -hmm. And the percentage, I, I've heard different accounts um, between eight and fifteen percent off. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's quite concerning. Did that happen in 2016 as well? In Massachusetts, in Massachusetts. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did. The mm -hmm. exit polls that either... So, people of Massachusetts, are you liars or did you get cheated? Mm -hmm. You right. tell the world. You tell the world, Massachusetts. Do you lie? Do you lie when you come out and the person is asking the exit poll, oh, I'm going to tell them that I voted for Bernie Sanders and I like Medicare for all, even if I have to lose my private See, insurance. No <laughs> sense. What person's going to go and vote for Biden and then and come then out and say in the voted. exit poll they voted for Bernie? So where is that 8 to 15 percent discrepancy coming from when the exit poll does not match the outcome? And if that, mm. if that discrepancy rate was in, say, Venezuela, <laughs> or Brazil, Bolivia, or Bolivia. Whoa! Wait a minute. What do we do in the U.S. when that kind of disparity comes up on the exit polls? <laughs> Cuckoo! Wait a minute. <laughs> we put sanctions on them. So, if we follow the logic of the American government at this point, we need to sanction Massachusetts and Texas. Mm -hmm. They need to be sanctioned, and they need to redo their elections or we're going to increase the sanctions. Such a good point. Yeah. So we or we just we're flat so out playing. overthrow the government. Or that, yeah. That we have a little you know, just go on. There when when you have the the level of discrepancy in exit polls is that and see, here's another parallel to twenty sixteen. See, now notice they use the information in the exit polls to decide whose face went up. But they didn't tell us what the exit polls were saying. Because that's how we knew they cheated Bernie in 2016, is because mm -hmm. the exit polls were telling us. Specifically. Specifically. And, they didn't do that and then they time. stopped. In 2016, they stopped. They said, oh, we're not doing exit polls. They're, they're not accurate. <laughs> Excuse me? This is the, the kind of information we use to try to depose Cent South America and Central American governments because the exit polls, the exit polls is what people we use around the world, what mm -hmm. our government uses to decide if election was free and fair, mm -hmm. if the results match what the people thought happened, mm -hmm. is exit polls. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, they stopped doing them. Mm. Yeah, because mm. it, there was this inconvenient truth that kept coming out. <laughs> so, oh, no. you know, so a lot of people knew. A lot of people understood that we were being cheated. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, mm -hmm. Trump he, even picked up on it. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't care about anything but himself. Well, don't you think that that also suppresses the vote? I mean, when you're... 
people, we know where people stand on the issues. We, we just do. Knowing that that's happening, it can suppress the vote, and this is why then we... Why bother? Then why bother? Why bother? What's the point? This is what the um, boomer generation lady told us at one point. She's like, I'm, I'm not voting. This is who I think Kelly might have moved to come out on Tuesday because she, she understood that we were on the same page. This is why... This is, um, this is the only... This, yeah. And Bernie made folks... This is why some young folk were telling me that. I hope matters. Michigan and uh, Missouri and Washington State and Idaho... And who am I missing? There's like six states tomorrow. Right, there's six. I'm, I don't know. Who there's I'm six saying. states tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you folks, you need to overwhelm the ballot box and not accept results that are counter to what you know from your personal experience. Mm -hmm. If you're in a line, ask people who they're voting for if they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Just ask them. Yeah. yeah, do your own little mini poll. Do and, and, and understand. Mm -hmm that our our democracy right now is owned our corporate media our corporate media there are six corporations that own 90 percent of what you see on your television and a hundred percent of the national news a hundred percent of that is owned mm -hmm. that you see on the tv and i mean it's the coincidence that they, they, they seem to always bend to what the DNC wants them to do to a lot of the networks um, that host debates and whatnot and now with the most recent news about them trying to change the debate format. Oh, trying. <laughs> trying. <laughs> no. Changing the They're debate changing format the to format. hide Biden from the public even more so. Oh, yeah, have you heard the latest one on that one? <laughs> What's the latest? The latest on that one is that uh, it's a Russian plot, this narrative that Biden is uh, losing it. Oh, that his, his it's, mental faculties are yes, coming into this Russian plot. That, yes, that I have. That it's, that's, it's, that's quite It's, it's Russian bots now. Right, we, so they're telling we, us we should not believe our eyes, we should not believe our ears. We should. Those of us who have been paying just, attention to politics for years and years and years and who remember Remember Vice President Biden, the sharp, articulate man who dismantled Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. And you compare that to the guy you've seen snippets of in the debate. <laughs> Just snippets of. If you don't get, if you don't go to YouTube and seek out alternative um, clips of his behavior, and you don't decide for yourself, you folks who are voting tomorrow. There has never been a more important opportunity in your life to make America a true democracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is your day. Tomorrow is your day. And, and I, I really believe it's, it's going to happen. I mean, just the feeling, the swell of emotion on the ground is so overwhelming. Um, I, I can't imagine that, that, this, that they're not going to come out. Um, yeah. And all we can do is look to the system and look to see what problems that they're putting in front of us. Right, right. Now, different state parties have different levels of corruption. Hmm. That's the one thing I learned by being a national delegate gotcha. in 2016. You know, there were, there were states who were in the Hillary Victory Fund, and there are states who weren't in the Hillary Victory Fund. Hmm. Now, the Hillary Victory Fund was legal political campaign money laundering. Mm -hmm. uh, they, can, they can take me to court if they want because I would love, love the press. So please bring it on, Indiana State Party, because <laughs> I overheard a conversation where a party official was complaining that when they put the money in to Indiana's coffers for uh, the Hillary Victory Fund, when they withdrew it, they took out more than what they put in. Oh. And they were trying to get that money back. Oh, interesting. See, because okay. our state is so bad at their jobs, <laughs> our state Democratic Party, that we accepted a position in this money laundering thing mm -hmm. without even negotiating a cut. Mm -hmm. So that maybe, just maybe, we could put some money behind mm -hmm. a 
candidate to get one of the other house seats back. Yeah, yeah. see, I, and that's why I think having Senator Sanders at the top of the ticket would actually have the reverse effect of what a lot of the pundits on TV are telling you, because they don't, they are not connected, they don't know what regular people, they're all millionaires. Through. They don't know how sick they are of their local politician and congressperson, state representative, you know, all, the, everyone in the lower ticket level, they don't get it. I believe, I believe if Bernie Kratz began running alongside Senator Sanders, that's going to actually pull out more well, people see, at the it's, local it's the down ticket level. It's the establishment Democrats who are worried about down ballot Exactly, races. but they, they like to lump themselves in as regular folk. So they say, oh, this is what, the, they control so much of the narrative that that type of power those consolidated corporations that now own this, they should not have that type of power to to put instill fear. Fear is what it, it is. Fear is what they're doing. They're weaponizing fear to stop people from coming out and to say, "Okay, well, you told me that Biden is the safer one, so I, and it's too bad. I like Bernie, but what am I going to do? I want to be Trump, so here I go. I'm going to go vote for Biden because you told me on NPR yes. they did that. Yeah. A lady called in and said. They're like, okay, why uh, in New Hampshire? Why are you voting? Who are you voting for? And they're like, well, Biden, because like you said, and and he had to stop and say, well, I actually didn't say that, but our guest did. Yeah, like you said, Biden would beat Trump, and so I guess I have to do that, even though I like so and so, or I like Bernie. <laughs> hmm. So we need a more educated electorate. We need, well, you know. It's, it's interesting how this all fits in the same downward spiral. You stop funding schools. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. You stop funding schools. Mm -hmm. You stop thinking, teaching critical thinking. You, uh, and now people don't know how to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And who profits from that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? When I was a little girl, billionaires did not exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to watch those James Bond movies and be like, how unrealistic <laughs> is this? A bald guy with his own spaceship? What person could never amass that much? That's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that kind of and a private army? Yeah. Who, who and has a private army? Yet that and, can't happen. And, and I think it's a falsehood that a lot of people, a lot of people in the media, try to put on Sanders and their supporters, saying, "Oh, they, they're just jealous of the wealthy and blah blah blah." It's not about jealousy. When Senator Sanders says that billionaires should not exist, it's not the human shouldn't exist. It's they shouldn't have. They shouldn't be able to. A mass. They shouldn't be able to get to that point because the only way you can get to that point to amass so much is by stepping on those below you um, decade after decade and buying Congress to support these trade deals that benefits them only. If you want to visualize a billion dollars. It's not through hard work that they get it. FYI. Okay, folks, let's visualize um, a, a billion dollars, just one billion dollars. So if we put it, a dollar equals a second, Bernie Sanders has 12 days of wealth. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos has over 1,200 years mm. <laughs> of wealth. Right, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the big you, difference between a million and a billion. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think many people realize that, but. So anybody, mm -hmm. you know, Bernie Sanders, we bought his books. That's why he's a millionaire. He has three houses because he's a sitting senator, so he has a home in Vermont, um, a townhouse in uh, D.C., and they used his wife's inheritance to buy a cabin on the lake in Vermont. Right. Yeah. Oh my God, that's just, it's, it's mm -hmm. so terrible. Right. We're, we're not trying, Bernie's not trying to kill off capitalism. No, no. He's, he's trying, trying to, to kill usury. <laughs> he, he is... In a way, arguably, arguably, Bernie is attempting to restore our country to FDR, New Deal, uh, workers' justice, uh, can't, a, a place where billionaires can't exist. Mm -hmm. And another argument that I've heard is, well, you can't, um, you, you can't tax companies so much because they'll leave. But that's, and I, my response to that is, that's not how capitalism works. 
a capitalist is not going to leave and say, sorry, the US, economy, US market, not interested anymore. I'm just going to leave. I, I won't take my, tip, my so what they're billions talking about, of profits. I'm gonna <laughs> what they're talking about that is something that we could fix anyway by making the laws so if they make the money in the U.S., the money has to stay in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It can't go off to the Cayman Islands. It can't. Mm -hmm. And these are loopholes that Bernie is talking about closing. People want to know how how we are going to pay for this. How are we going to pay for it? Talk about closing. We're going to pay for it pockets. by not having... Um, the biggest military budget in the world times eight. We're gonna we're gonna end endless war. We're gonna stop creating more disabled veterans. We're gonna we're gonna cut that off. We're gonna invest in our people. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand people who think it's okay for us for there, anybody to profit off of accidents and illness. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why anybody thinks that's okay. I don't mm -hmm. get it. In other countries, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We're the only industrialized nation left that doesn't have a, a form of universal health care. Mm -hmm. We have to end private insurance because they have such a hold that they will game the system and make it not work out. Right. Because the way, one of the main ways for the cost savings is through streamlining all the paperwork for everybody mm -hmm. to where there's one set of forms to fill out to see, get paid. See, I, I'm all about re reducing the bureaucracy. <laughs> and it's not like we won't it's have jobs bureaucracy. for these people. Right. Because, you know, if, if I miraculously could afford to go see a doctor, I might actually go when I oh, need to. Goodness. Yeah. And so there will need more offices. So it's a good thing that we want to uh, pay for people's educations. And we're going to do that with a transaction tax on those MFs on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. People who are just pushing money and that's they do no service for our country. Mm -hmm. They don't build a road. They don't build a building. They don't serve you food. They don't pump your gas. They don't do anything. They don't make anything happen mm -hmm. except guessing. It's, it's gambling. Well, it's gambling, yeah. They, and it's uh, irresponsible gambling um, because they know there's no consequences if, if they're wrong. That's that's yeah. how it's played out so yeah. far because because they <laughs> run the game. So voters, those of you who have a primary tomor tomorrow, I am, I implore you, you have to go out. I implore you to vote for Bernie Sanders, the only candidate in the entire field who has never taken corporate money, doesn't have a corporate powered super PAC. His super PACs are a nurses union, kids, uh, Sunrise Movement, which is the the kids youth that sat in, activists. yeah, youth climate activists, the ones who did the sit-in at Nancy Pelosi's office. Mm -hmm. Their fundraising efforts, they're using towards getting Bernie elected. Right. And then there was a third one that, uh, the our revolution that had given them like. Seventeen hundred dollars, <laughs> right? Something so Bernie. practically negligible, and, but and the three organizations that are technically super PACs disclose their donors, right? So it's not dark money. It's, it's not, not dark money. It's not, and it, and but, right, and they are funded primarily, it, almost all fully by small dollar donations given to those organizations and, and no all the, all the bigger all the bigger donations say who they're from say who they're from yeah so there isn't dark money in Bernie Sanders campaign mm -hmm. don't believe corporate media when they tell you different don't believe somebody who did cultural appropriation for a couple of decades and still hasn't straightened it out and can't understand it don't let her tell you that he is anything less than a noble man. It's just yet another false equivalency saying, oh, he takes super PAC money too, and with no effort to try to differentiate what those PACs are, are about and how they're funded and how they disclose or don't disclose on their donors. It's just so frustrating mm -hmm. as an individual with, with heart and empathy mm -hmm. to 
be faced with this dishonest effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's completely disheartening. There's so many things that are happening, but this is why it's, in a way, there's a lot of us of, of, of the base that are being energized to, to want to get out there harder and knock on doors. I mean, just a handful of people that I now know that went up from Indy, people I didn't even know that were going up there I met in Detroit. Like, I came up from Indy too, and here you are, a whole bus full of people from Indianapolis. Um, Any going, last thoughts? Um, no, just get out, get out, please go vote. Um, Michigan especially, we need you. Um, Missouri, your children we need you. Or the Washington, future needs need you. you. <laughs> we, what you, you have the power to change the narrative. The, the media holds a lot of that power. You can, you can get out there and flood the polls so that it's too big to rig. Get out there for Senator Bernie Sanders. And my name is Sue Spicer. I officially endorse Bernie Sanders for president. And I dare you all to participate in democracy. Your action, for sustainable action today, is to vote in your primary for the person of your choice. And if unless you are a millionaire, you're, you don't know your, the, your own side. If Unless you're a millionaire, you don't know your own side in the fight if you're not voting for Bernie Sanders. So, folks, this is Sue Spicer with Sustainable Action here on Cozy Radio, the heart and soul of the city. Thank you so much for listening.